morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Una vez más. Buenos días. Y feliz año nuevo. I'm setting this up. I do want to take a moment. I want to say uh, thank you to uh, Olivia. Uh, this morning I'm using my new Bible, my old new Bible. She, she uh, got this for me for, uh, I think for Christmas a number of years ago, but um, nothing wrong with the old Bible, so I was continuing to use it, and, and it as it has gotten to the point where it has really started to wear out, uh, I'm starting to use a new one, so I appreciate that, and appreciate her for um, giving me this. If I'm a little slower, the pages are all the same, but it's a little different in here, so if I'm a little slower turning, just be patient. You will bow with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we are assembled here this morning to worship you to teach and admonish one another, to study your word, to grow a knowledge of your will. And Father, as we do so, we pray that we will be pleasing to you, acceptable in our worship to you. Father, we pray that we may grow by our studies, that we may look at these things, apply them to our lives, live as you would have us to live. Father in heaven, we pray that we may share the good news with others, that they may come to know you before it's everlasting too late. Father, it is in Christ's most precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Growth is a choice. That's the name of our, our, our lesson this morning. El crecimiento es una elección. And we're going to be... Uh, looking at this and, and hopefully <coughs> uh, understanding it better and, and uh, looking at what God's Word teaches us. Again, growth is a choice. It does not happen by chance. El crecimiento es una elección. No sucede por casualidad. This lesson is from a statement by Brother Michael Jimenez on Facebook. Esta lección es de una declaración del hermano Michael Jimenez in Facebook. And Michael, of course, came up with the school a, a few years back, so some of you might remember him, and uh, one of the students, and, and he is now, of course, graduated, now working. Uh, preaching, and we appreciate him and, and the efforts that he puts forth, and, and others as well. And we're thankful for brothers who who are are serving the Lord. Growth is a biblical subject. It is an important one. El crecimiento es un tema bíblico es importante. As we look to a fresh new year, let us consider the question, do we want to grow? Mientras miramos hacia un nuevo año fresco, consideramos la pregunta, ¿Quieramos crecer? Allow me to be clear that I speak of growth in the sense of personal growth. Growing as a Christian. Permitanme per ser claro que hablo de crecimiento en el sentido de crecimiento personal, creciendo como cristiano. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, segundo Pedro, capítulo 3, we read, Liermos, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Grow in grace, we are taught. And that is an important thing that we, are, uh, so that we need to, 
to learn and we need to obey. Crescer en la gracia. A e el uh, conocimiento de nuestro Señor. So grow in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we need to uh, make certain that we are obeying God's will on this. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 13 uh, through uh, 15. Uh, Ephesios capítulo 4 y versículo 13 al 15. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the state of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Most of us perhaps have heard our parents say that at one time or another, grow up. I know I heard that statement more than once, grow up. And, and of course others probably have told us that, that we have been taught to, to quote unquote grow up. And that is something that we are, are told often as we do grow, as we do mature. Well, brothers and sisters, the Bible is telling us what? To grow up, to mature. If we obey the gospel, we are new babes in Christ, we might think about. And, and yet the Bible teaches us that we are not to stay in that state, are we? We are to mature, we are to grow. How sad it is to see those who are quote-unquote Christian, who obey the gospel... Who, who never grow up, who never mature, who never become stronger, who, who they remain the same as they were when they first obeyed the gospel, or possibly, if we dare say, they get less strong. They lose that passion, they lose that, that excitement of, of being a Christian and, and that newness of it, so they just kind of go along and they never really mature. Brothers and sisters, the Bible teaches us not to be like that. In 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 3 and verse 12, 1 Thessalonians capítulo 13, versículo 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. Think about the, the, the terms that we, we've seen here. We are to grow in grace, as Peter said. We are to grow uh, in love, as, as Paul here addresses. These things help us to mature as we go through our walk with Christ, as we as we live for Him. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1, Hebreos capítulo 6 y versículo 1, we read, Learmos, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Brothers and sisters, we are always to remember this. Remember God's word, of course, uh, in Second Peter chapter one and verse twelve. Segundo uh, Pedro capítulo uno y versículo doce. We of course read there how Peter talks about putting them in mind of those things that they already knew. Certainly, we should understand that and remember those things. But we need to not just go back and have to rehash and relearn all the things that we should already know and be doing. These are things that, that the, the Bible teaches us, and we ought to know these things and be obedient to them as we live our, our Christian life. As we see, growing, maturing as a Christian is a biblical principle. Como vemos crecer, madura, madurar, como cristiano es un principio bíblico. Again, though, it is a choice. Una vez más, sin embargo, 
Es una elección. It is up to us whether we choose to grow, whether we choose to mature. No one can force you to. My, my parents would tell me as I was growing up, they'd tell me to grow up. It drive me crazy when they do that. It made me mad. Grow up. I was already grown. I was, I was 12, 13, 14 years old, 15. I was grown up. I was just sure of that. What the, and, and here's somebody telling me to grow up. But brothers and sisters, as much as they might have told me that, they can't force me to do that, can they? I suppose if I was of mind to, I could get down in the floor out here, break out toys, and just go around and play, play with toys and, and, and just live my life as a little child. If I wanted to make that choice. I can choose not to mature as a Christian. I can choose not to grow as the Bible teaches me to do so. That is a choice that I must make and that you, each of us must make. It takes desire. Se necesita deseo. If we expect to grow, then we must want to grow. Si esperamos crecer, entonces debemos querer crecer. You have to want to grow in order to, to actually mature, to actually uh, grow up. You have to want to make those efforts. In Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15, a su capítulo 24 y versículo 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What did Joshua tell them that day? Choose you this day. You make a choice. Oh, I made my choice, he says. My family and I, we're going to serve the Lord. But you choose what you will do. And that is the choice that God gave the Israelites, isn't it? You can go back and study and, and see how that he laid out very very plainly that they had a choice. Here's your choice. Obey, and here's what the, will happen if you do. Here, Disobey, and here's what's going to happen if you choose to do that. But He gave them that choice. And you today, you and I, we have the choice whether we will grow. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11, in this entire chapter, of course, we often talk about uh, chapter 13 and, and we talk about it in context of, of love, but we see that it is talking about what? Maturing, growing, uh, growing up, we might say. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11, 1 Corinthians capítulo 13, versículo 11. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. Excuse me. Verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. In my example I used, what would you all think of me if I brought my little toys, if I had little toys and I brought them and and I sat down here in the floor and just started playing with little toys like I did whenever I was a child. You'd think something was wrong with me, wouldn't you? You'd think I'd lost my mind. Because at my age, I shouldn't necessarily be doing that, should I? I should have put those things away. It's okay when we're children to act like children. Sometimes we, we want to make our children into adults. How sad it is to see parents do that, try to push their children into being an adult. They're not. They're children. But 
brothers and sisters, there does come a point where we do become adults, where we have to make that choice, that we are going to start acting as an adult would act. And religiously, as far as being a Christian, that's what Paul addresses here, right? He's, of course, talking in context. He's talking about the miraculous and, and the, the benefit of the Word over the miraculous. Love, specifically, he talks about in here and his supremacy. But brothers and sisters, the truth is, is as... As Christians, we are to mature. Again, we, we are to grow up. Becoming a Christian was a choice. You had to make the choice to obey the gospel. Convertirse en cristiano fue una elección. Tenías que tomar la decisión de obedecer el evangelio. It's a choice that you had to make. Those of us who have obeyed the gospel, we had to make that choice to do so. No one can drag you down. I suppose if someone's big enough, they can grab someone and drag them down and, and uh, dunk them in the water, but all they will be doing is dunking them in the water. It'll do them no good. You, choose, you chose to serve the Lord. Esco histe servir al Señor. You made that choice to serve the Lord. Just the same. As a Christian, you must choose whether you will mature or not. De todos modos, como cristiano, debes elegir si maduras o no. It takes a great deal of work. Se necesita Mucho trabajo. Becoming a Christian. Of course, we obey the gospel. It's a simple thing. But maturing as a Christian, growing as a Christian, it takes work and a lot of it. It doesn't just happen. I don't learn the Word just some miraculous way. I've talked about on previous occasions, my uncle preaches. As a, as a young man, I was always impressed that I could... If I was ever wondering where something was, I could ask him. Pick up the phone, call him, and either he could tell me right off the top of his head, or he'd say, well, give me a minute, and I'll check, and I'll call you back. And literally, after I hung up, it was a couple of seconds, and he'd be calling me back telling me where the text was. Brothers and sisters, he didn't just miraculously have that ability. He has that ability because he spent time in picking up the Bible and studying it and, and learning what it says. It took many years of study, many years of effort to, to have that ability. We grow through the Word of God. Crescemos a través de la Palabra de Dios. Brothers and sisters, if you want to grow, if you want to mature as a Christian, here's where you turn. Turn to the Bible. Turn to His Word. Study what His Word teaches you. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, Premier Pedro, capítulo 2, versículo 2. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the Word, that ye may grow thereby. So as a newborn babe, you what? You must... Bro, you must study His Word. I didn't put it in here, but I would encourage you to study Matthew chapter 28, verses uh, 28, uh, excuse me, Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Uh, Mateo capítulo uh, 28 y versículo um, 19 y 20. Uh, and study that, that text and see, what does it teach? That they were to go out and teach those People teach others what they needed to know in order to become a Christian and then teach them the things they needed to, what? They needed to do, right? There's two different words. We've talked about that. We've studied it before. There's two different words translated as teach and teaching. There. 
One, talking about them, teaching them the things they needed to know in order to become a Christian, and then teaching them the things they needed to know in order to grow, we might say, as a Christian. We need to know, uh, we need to have that milk of the Word to get to the point. But we know, of course, that we must go beyond that, right? In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 through Chapter 6, verse 3, Hebreos, capítulo 5, versículo 11, al 6, capítulo 6, versículo 3. We see, of course, in, in that text, and I didn't put it on here, you can read through there, what does Paul, or, or the Hebrews writer, many people believe it's Paul, but what did the Hebrews writer say there? He said that you need to go beyond that. We don't need to keep going over these necessarily same things as far as to clarify, to, to learn them. Certainly, again, Peter points out that there is a point that you need to remind people, and, and he took no shame in doing so. But, but we must go beyond that and not just keep arguing back and forth over and over about these basic things. With those things are settled. We need to go beyond that and mature beyond those things and continue to to grow and learn more and more. Yet the Word does not magically enter our minds as we've been talking about. We must study His Word. Sin embargo, la palabra no entra magicamente en nuestras mentes. Debemos estudiar su palabra. Study the Word. If you want to know God's Word, you have to study His Word. And it, it takes, again, it takes work to do so. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Segundo Timoteo capítulo 12, versículo 15. Of course, we know uh, what the Word here teaches us. We are what, told to what? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. We are to study his word. The Bible teaches us indeed to do that. In in Joshua chapter one and verse eight. Asue. Capitulo uno y versículo ocho. Of course the Lord teaches Joshua there to do what? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou shalt that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Spend day and night in his word, he said. Know this word. Why? Why would why would Joshua need to spend all that time in the word? That he might know those things and that he might remind himself of those things. That he might know what God's will is. And in doing so, what did he tell him? His way would be prosperous. His way would be good. Or that he would have good success that year. It is an important thing for us to understand if we want to be pleasing to God. If we want to do well as Christians, as people, what do we do? We spend time in His Word. We grow in knowledge of His will. Studying the Word of God is hard work. It is worth all the effort we put into it. Estudiar la palabra de Dios es un trabajo duro. Vale la pena todo el esfuerzo que ponemos en ello. Brothers and sisters, no matter how much time you spend in His Word, it is time well spent. It isn't wasted. It's good time we spend in His Word, learning His Word. And, and no matter how much we may think we know, guess what? There's always more to learn. And there are things, if you're like me, you read through the Bible and you see things, and it's amazing how many times I've been reading through my Bible and and, and I'll say, oh, wow, I need to link this to this text over here. And I turn over and start doing that. And, well, 
Obviously, I've done had that thought before because I've already done it. But I didn't remember. And there I, there I, I am making that connection and, and re-establishing, we might say, that connection. Always reminding ourselves. The older I get, the more I find that I have to remind myself of things. All the studying in the world will be of little profit if we do not put His Word into practice. Todo el estudio en el mundo será de poca utilidad si no ponemos en práctica su palabra. you don't put it into practice, we can talk about studying and the importance of studying and it is very crucial that we do study. But if we study all the time and we don't put a, that into practice, we don't actually do what His Word teaches us, it's really of no great benefit, is it? What good does it do me to know that it, what the Word says if I don't ever obey the Word? In James chapter 1 and verse 22, Santiago capítulo 1 in versículo 22, we're taught what? We're taught to be doers of the word, aren't we? James chapter 1 and verse uh, 22, Santiago capítulo 1 in versículo 22, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. How sad it is to see those who know the truth, know what God's Word teaches, and yet they will not obey it. They will not be faithful to it. Ignorance certainly isn't an excuse. God has given us His Word, and He's going to hold us to His Word, whether we choose to ignore it or not. But brothers and sisters, knowing His Word and failing to do it is, is truly sad. Because His Word teaches us the consequences thereof teaches us about what will happen if we choose to not obey, obey His will. John 13, verses 34 and 35 teaches us to love our brothers and sisters. We must put this teaching into practice. Juan 13, versículo 34 y 35 nos enseña a amar a nuestros hermanos y hermanas. Debemos poner en práctica esta enseñanza. You have to put that into practice, brothers and sisters, to love one another. And of course, there's much that can be said about that. We're not going to spend a great deal of time talking about what that means. We've studied it. We hopefully understand it. But we need to put that into practice. It's, it's one thing to know that we're supposed to love one another, but are we showing that? Are we doing that? Are we, are we loving one another? Remember that the Greek word... Agapao, used here, is an active love. Recuerde que la palabra grega, grega agapao, utilizada aquí, es, una, es un amor activo. It is an active verb. It is, it is showing activity. That we must be doing those things. We love one another. Saying it is one thing, but how do we show it? The Bible talks about that, doesn't it? Are we doing that? Peter teaches us to add the Christian graces to our lives. 2 Peter 1, verses 5 through 11. Pedro nos enseña a agregar las gracias cristianas a nuestras vidas. Segundo Pedro, capítulo 1, y versículo 5 al 11. This takes action. It takes effort. Esto requiere acción, requiere esfuerzo. We have to work to add those things to our lives. And it is a, is a, a thing that we must continue to do. James said that faith without works is dead. James 2, 26. Santiago dijo que la fe sin en obras está muerta. Santiago, capítulo 12, versículo 26. Without putting God's word into action, it is as good as dead to us. Sin poner la palabra de Dios en acción, 
es tan buena como muerta para nosotros. It takes time. Lleva tiempo. Remember the old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. Recuerda el viejo dicho, Roma no se construyó en un día. Didn't just happen overnight, did it? Don't expect that you can reach full maturity in a day. No esperes que puedes, puedes alcanzar la mudures completa en un día. You must desire to mature. Debes desear madurar. You must work to mature. Debes trabajar para madurar. And you must persist in your desire and effort. Y debes persistir en tu deseo y esfuerzo. It isn't going to happen overnight, but it does take a lot of effort and time to grow, to mature. We think about that and we tell, uh, if many times, uh, as I said, we expect our children just to be grown-ups. They're not. But neither should we expect our newborn baby that we have there, we shouldn't expect our, our 12-year-old to act like our newborn baby. As they grow, they what? They mature. They, they change. As a parent, I can tell you, I can watch as my child grows and doesn't act the same way as when she was two or three years old. She acts different now. And that is a normal thing. As Christians, we shouldn't act the same way that we did when we obeyed the gospel as we are now, as we've been Christians for many years. Hopefully we still have that enthusiasm, we still have that energy, that fire, but we should also have grown in knowledge. Moving forward, make every effort to become a stronger, more faithful Christian. Seguir adelante a ser todo lo posible para llegar a ser un cristiano más fuerte y fiel. I want to encourage you this morning. Quiero animarlos esta mañana. And I hope that the lesson has been encouraging to you. If you are not a Christian, obey the gospel. Si no eres cristiano, Obedece el Evangelio. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Debes creer que Jesucristo es el Hijo de Dios. You must repent of your sins. Debes arrepentirte de tus pecados. You must confess that Christ is the Son of God. Debes confesar que Cristo es el Hijo de Dios. You must be baptized. Debes ser bautizado. If you are a Christian, but have not been faithful, si eres cristiano, pero no has sido fiel, you must repent of your sins. Debes arrepentirte de tus pecados. You need to respond to the invitation. Si necesitas responder a la invitación, come, ven, while we stand and while we sing, mientras estamos de pie y mientras cantamos. There's a great day coming, a great day coming, there's a great day coming, bright and bright.